Miles Irving, uh, I, I met you a couple of days ago. We were having a uh, fantastic uh, dinner out of wild forage ingredients, and now we're here in the yes. Kentish <clears throat> countryside. Uh, we, we just literally came back from foraging, had an amazing meal in between, and uh, during the way you showed us probably uh, a couple of dozen uh, wild, uh, yeah. wild foods, edible yeah. plants on the way. Uh, how, do you, how did you uh, become a master forager and the author of uh, the Forager Handbook? By being very curious. Um, I must say I have had some kind of element of foraging in my life since I was six years old. I was lucky enough to have the right kind of grandfather that took me out and taught me some wild mushrooms. Um, but I must say, um, it took me till much later in life to um, to uh, to really engage with the, the plant kingdom. Um, and it was just my curiosity eventually got the better of me, and the sense of irritation that I had knowing that I was surrounded by wild things that I could eat in the plant kingdom. Right. And I was limited to a few berries and the mushrooms that I knew. So eventually. Um, it got too much, and uh, I, um, I bought a good plant identification guide, coupled with a nice book with some good recipes in that told me about 20 edible plants that I could eat um, that grew in the wild in my neighborhood, and I just um, ticked them off one by one. Some weeks of great frustration failing to find one, but when you eventually cracked it, it's, it's like finding uh, some buried treasure that you knew was in the, in the, in the ground somewhere around here, and, and you, you, you finally have it. And um, it's that satisfaction when you go and look for something, you find it, you cook something delicious, especially when you share that experience with friends. There's a sort of aura of excitement and aura of rediscovery. That, like this is something we all should have known all along, and now we're knowing it. So um, that's uh, th so that that's that's very self-reinforcing. Once you've learned a couple of plants, you think, well, what else is there? So then I started digging right into research, other people's wild food books, ethnobotanical literature, also a bit of putting two and two together. I know this is a safe family, for example, when you discover that the cabbage family, everything you can eat. So then I get my plant book and think, well, what else is there in the cabbage family? And we go looking for those ones and, and so on. And then sometimes you go to another country and there's, there's, a, there's a tradition that you discover from somebody you meet of eating a plant that you've seen all along and never occurred to you could eat that one. So there's lots of different threads by which you can obtain that knowledge, but uh, it, curiosity is what drives it, basically. And I, and I definitely yeah. share the excitement. I mean, I, I think there's this uh, very primal sense of fulfillment when you find, uh, find, uh, find a wild, her wild herb or a plant and, uh, and to turn it into food, something that becomes essentially a part of our bodies. It's deeply satisfying. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, what are your what are some of your principles when it comes to food, and, and especially plant-based food, forage food? Um, well, I mean, I have to say, I came into this just from the, the, the beauty of the idea. It's wild. I, I, can, I can eat it. It's the joy of that kind of discovery. I am now at a stage in my life where I'm becoming much more conscious of why this is a good idea from a health perspective. To be honest, that's, that's fairly like the last three or four years it's become more of a, um, a, a dominant thread now. So, um, I mean, really I try not to eat any um, cultivated salads, any, uh, I don't know why I say I try not to, I mean I don't, I don't buy salads. <laughs> Um, and what's, and the, what's, the, what's the main reason uh, to, because, to the larger because, audience? Well, number one, I don't need to because I've got a, I've got a whole repertoire of, of wild things that I can eat. And number two, why would I want to eat that tasteless stuff that's not very nutritious, basically? Wild stuff so full of flavor, so full of nutrition. So, I mean, these days, um, if, if there is something I try and observe, it's, it's just, just to eat a really good wild salad every day. And, and, and I make sure my kids eat some of that. Uh, wild salad every day because I'm just so convinced that um, you know our diet has become impoverished not just because of what we eat but the narrow bandwidth of what we eat you know um, people in the past ate so many different plants especially full-blown hunter-gatherer cultures but even subsistence farmers that have eaten their weeds and a lot of stuff in the hedgerows and so on and I'm just when I look at the nutrition profile of just one wild plant and see that the you know the, the calcium levels, the magnesium levels, the vitamin C, the protein, everything is just much above anything you'd find for a cultivated plant. So we take that thought and then we take the thought that I could eat 
30 different ones today. And over the course of a year, 150, 200, 250, if I'm really trying to catch everything. Um, so it's, it's when you look at the nutrition profile of that diversity of plants that I'm ingesting, I'm thinking, okay, I don't know exactly what that's doing for me, but I think it's doing something very, very good. Um, and, and, and that's both from the point of view of beneficial things, uh, just promoting health, but also um, preventing illness. I'm, I'm quite convinced of that. So on top of being uh, nutritious and delicious, yes. uh, all, all of these, uh, yes. the, the nature's, nature treasures are also accessible. So what would your tip, uh, tips be for someone wanting to uh, dig into this, uh, this art and craft of, of, yes. uh, of uh, foraging if you can, food? Absolutely. So if you, can, if you can discover just one wild plant, get it in your diet. I think the, the, the most important thing is to find and begin with just one wild plant and then act on that knowledge. Take that plant and, and make it part of your diet. And everybody must know one wild plant. They must know the stinging nettle. And uh, it, in addition to that, they probably know the dandelion. So take these plants, cook your, cook your nettles, and, and put them in a pasta sauce tonight if you're gonna eat pasta. Put it in your soup if you're gonna eat soup. You know? um, take that dandelion, chop it and put it in your salad, whatever it is, tonight. And that, that simple act of gathering a plant and making it part of your food today, you'll, it'll change your life just to do that. You'll want to do it again. And from there, you can learn the third plant, the fourth plant, the fifth plant, but you won't, you won't, you won't need to be motivated uh, because you'll just be hungry to find more. And uh, now with your, your book, The Forager Handbook, uh, a Guide to the Edible Plants of Britain by Miles Irving, it's, it's easy to, to get into this. Uh, this, uh, this exciting discipline. Miles, thank you so much. It's been You're a welcome. pleasure. It's a pleasure.